astronomical distances. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky tonight. Hey, Dean, humor me. If you want to describe your height, what units of measure would you use? I'd use feet and inches. And if we wanted to measure the distance to the moon, what would we use? I could use feet and inches, but using miles makes more sense. How about the distance to the stars? Ah, we use light years. Distances in space are so well astronomical that it's hard to wrap our brains around them. So we created new units of measurement to take us around the solar system and through interstellar space. So let's take you to the moon, Jupiter, and beyond. Okay, we have our sky set up for the evening of May 26th at about 10.30 p.m. and we're facing southeast. Every night this week, you'll see the waxing moon in the night sky. But on this night, the moon will be a waxing gibbous and appear at the feet of the constellation Virgo. Let's zoom in on the moon and get out our tape measure. On average, the moon is about 239,000 miles from the Earth. We can find out the precise distance to the moon anytime by bouncing lasers off the reflectors set up by the Apollo astronauts. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and company took three days to fly the 239,000 miles to the moon and three days to fly back. Our next stop is Jupiter. The largest planet is easy to find in the night sky all this week. Look southeast after dark and you can't miss it. Jupiter is super bright. Jupiter, all right, I like that. Anyway, Jupiter is brighter than any other star in the nighttime sky. Only the planet Venus, and on rare occasions, Mars, can be more dazzling. This is a good week to aim a telescope at Jupiter where you can see several moons around it, some stripes on it, and maybe the great red spot, a giant hurricane on the planet. This week, Jupiter is about 410 million miles away. Now, that number is hard to picture, so when we're talking about distances in the solar system, astronomers use a different unit of measure, the astronomical unit, or AU. One AU is the average distance between the Sun and the Earth, so we're about one AU from the Sun in miles. That's 93 million miles. So, since Jupiter is 410 million miles away, it is also about 4.4 AUs from us. AUs work great within the solar system. For example, we could say Saturn is about 10 AUs from the Sun, Neptune is about 30 AUs from the Sun, and Voyager 1, our farthest flung spacecraft, is a whopping 140 AUs from the Sun. You may notice a little star next to Jupiter. That is one of my favorite stars to say out loud and fast. It's called Zubinel Genubi, and it's the second brightest star in the constellation Libra the Scales. Zubinel Genubi is about 447 trillion miles from Earth, or almost 5 million AUs. We can measure the distance to Zubinel Genubi in millimeters if we wanted to, but those numbers would lose all meaning. Astronomers use light years as their unit of choice for measuring interstellar distances. A light year is the distance light travels in a year, roughly 5.8 trillion miles. So a light year is a distance like a mile or an AU. And Zubinel Genubi is a whopping 77 light years from Earth. It's by no means the farthest star you could see with the naked eye. That honor most likely goes to Deneb, the tail star of Cygnus the Swan, who you'll be learning more about this summer. Deneb is over 3,000 light years away. That means the light you see from Deneb left at around 1000 BC and is only now getting to your eyes. So this week, get outside to see the moon at 239,000 miles away. Jupiter from 4.4 AUs away. And Zubinel Genubi at 77 light years away. And there's one more thing. Yes. I know you'll like this, James, but on the night of May 27th, the moon will cozy up to Jupiter and Zubinel Genubi and make a cool conjunction. It's all there when you keep, keep looking, looking up. up.